Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is model and design timber structures in RFM 6 and RStart 9. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the Dluba software company. I will be the moderator today. My colleague Gerhard Rehm will be the presenter, but he can introduce himself. Yeah, thank you, Andreas, for the introduction and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Gerhard Rehm. I'm responsible for the customer support and for the development for the timber add-ons. And yeah, I'm happy to present you our software today. Okay, thank you, Gerhard, for your introduction. Then we can switch off our webcams so that the attendees can see the full screen. You can ask questions via the <clears throat> sorry control panel on the right side of your screen. You can enter a short question here and I will answer you. Yeah, in the case there are too many questions during the webinar, uh, we will answer you via email after the webinar. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and email questions to info at global.com. Then I hand over the screen to Gerhard, just a moment. Okay, Gerhard, it's your turn. All right, perfect. Thank you, Andreas. So let's see what I plan today and uh, yeah, what I want to present. Um, maybe I go back to uh, to website first and I uh, want to show you that we already did a webinar on our firm six uh, with a timber add-on. So you can find it here under news and events, webinars, and here you can just set some filter, for example, past in English and according to Eurocode 5. And you will find all timber related webinars, what we did in the past. And this one here is about a 3D structure in, uh, in RFM 6. Um, today, of course, I want, don't want to do again a, a 3D structure, um, because, uh, yeah. There are, of course, a lot of different ways to show or different options to show. And today I present you a really small object, actually. But um, yeah, let's go to the agenda today. So we will model a hip rafter for this hip roof or a part of a hip roof. I will not model the whole roof because of uh, yeah, because of the time. Um, yeah, but. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to present you how to design, uh, in this case, two span beam with a cantilever. Yeah, that's actually not the aim. So the aim is, of course, loading. Yeah, how do we get the loads on this beam when we talk about the tributary area? So that's maybe not so, uh, so easy or not so, yeah, not so, um, well known about how to get these tributary areas for this, for this kind of beams. And that's one big issue. And of course, we will design the component. So in this case, the hip rafter. And we will spend a bigger focus today on the printout report. So in the last webinars, or actually during the webinars, what we do for the design add-on, steel, concrete, and so on, we do not spend so much time with it today. We, I want to spend a bigger focus on it. So uh, because this was always asked. Uh, and yeah, let's see. The aim is to get a really small, documentation with all necessary inputs. So without creating hundreds of pages, for example. And the reason why I show you the, yeah, the topics one through four is topic five. And this is about parameterization blocks and scripting, because the aim actually is to give you an environment or actually you can create an environment where you can use this beam or this kind of beams easily and you can repeat the input for example with a parameterization where you enter just a few values so the length and so on the inclination and so on and uh, yeah to get results really quick and this is the big aim okay so don't let's waste time with the presentation i will directly go to um, our program to r 6 i will not mention all changes compared to r 5 because we did this already in our 
uh, previous webinar. Okay, so I will give them a name. It's Hip Rafter. And I will activate the add on timber design. I don't need the load wizard because I will uh, apply the loads manually. Okay, we can select the standards. In this case, I select the Eurocode, five, uh, Eurocode 0 plus the SLS combinations for timber. And um, yeah, I'll leave it for the global Eurocode. But of course, you have a plenty of you have plenty of uh, national annexes as well. We'll leave it uh, with the global Eurocode. That's actually all for now. And then let's create this hipper after. All right. All right. So. The normal roof should have an inclination of 30 degree and yeah, let's create the beam. I use this tool length and direction here and I select a line length of 10 meters and I need to change this angle to 120 degree to get an angle of 30 or to get an, an inclination of 30 degree. All right, here we go. So now I need to create the cantilever and the spans in between. Um, so I will divide these lines, uh, or the, I will divide this line here. You see, there is already a shortcut for this option defined. You can define shortcuts here under View, Customize Menu and Toolbars, and here you have to find the correct um, tool and just apply here uh, the shortcut by double-clicking it. All right, so I hit my shortcut for it, and I will divide it for the cantilever by 0 0.8 meters with a true length or with a projected length of 0 0.8 meters. And again, the length of the, or the half length or the half width of the, of the building should be six meters. So I will enter six meters here. Oops, there we go. Okay, and I will add another purlin the same as we see here on the screen. So we have a pearl in here on the bottom um, or a ring beam, for example. And here we will have another pearl in or maybe walls. So it depends on the construction, of course. All right, so I will divide the line again at three meter 50. All right, so that's it for one roof side. Now I will, uh, yeah, I will create this hip rafter. So we choose the same inclination on both roof, roof sides. So in this case, it's easy. I, uh, there are more options to create this hip rafter, but of course I can show, show only one. Um, so let's create a copy in a distance of 10 meters. And here I use this option step links and I can directly add lines in between the nodes. Okay, I will rotate it by 90 degree or minus 90 degree around the apex. And I will copy and move these lines in minus 10 meter. And that's it actually. Now I need to, uh, or I use, I will use the connect tool, which is over here and connect all the lines. Okay, I can delete unnecessary lines and nodes again. Switch off the grid and now you can directly draw this line which represents the hip rafter. All right, we will mirror everything around the, or yeah, the mirror plane is in YC direction or in YC plane and the point B is exactly here in the apex. Okay, so we don't need this line and this line and this line and also not the notes. So I will delete it out. Okay, so let's define the rafter. So we can use the tool here, create new single member, or we can just select the lines. And I will um, activate here the member option. And now I can assign a cross section and a material. Okay, let's start with the cross section. In this case, um, yeah, 
the minimum height of the of the hip rafter depends on the check rafters of course so let's say the check rafters are have a height of 20 20 centimeters and because of the inclination of 30 degrees so it's 20 divided by cosinus 30 degree so the minimum height is at least yeah 23 centimeters so let's start with 24 centimeter height uh, but of course this is not a full truth when you think about some uh yeah some notches like uh the bird groove uh, cut or the yeah the cuts here on top side there are also different sections here on the bottom but we will come to this later first we start with a simple rectangular beam all right so let's start with 100 by 240 and let's assign a material so in this case you can use the filter or just enter your material directly here in the search function and in this case i can select this material gl24h according to euro uh, yen 140 uh, 80 sorry all right so that's it so far i just hit ok button and now i have this beam um yeah i don't want to have the beam also here because it's the same it's symmetric so i just show i just added this to the structure to show you uh yeah what is possible with the loads and so on for later okay then uh of course we have the beam we need support so i create just two nodal supports of course i need to rotate the supports by minus 45 degree in this example so I fix support on the bottom and the sliding support here on the top side. Um, okay, new one. Minus 45 degree and should be sliding in X direction. All right. Um, so here we go, we have the model and now we need the loads and that's the question now how we get the loads on this on this hip rafter without modeling each check rafters here that's the aim in this uh in this ex example of course i can add the check rafters but then i need to take care of yeah of the restraints here on the bottom side yeah of course the full load in this case should go to the hip rafter for the design and of course if i apply a fixed support here maybe there is a restraint and then the, the hip rafter will not get the full load and of course it's more complicated to or it's more time consuming uh, to create all these check rafters and so on and i want to show you an example today how does it work without okay let's create a screenshot first and let's talk about the tributary area for this for this uh, hip rafter Okay, so when we think about the classic hand calculation, how we did it in the past, or how we did it, or how we do it, or how we still do it, um, we have to think about okay, what is the the, the yeah the tributary area, and so let's let's focus here on this part, on this second span. And of course, I want to have. Oh, sorry, I will create a copy of this, and I have these two these two points or nodes here, yeah, which is exactly in the middle. So it's just geometrically, we have no uh, continuous effect. So it's just the basic. And how we get it, we get it by dividing it by 50% of the span lengths. And now we can measure our tri tributary uh, lengths by measuring this distance, okay, depending on the protection plane and so on. But when we are in the projected area we can use directly this this value yeah? and the tributary area in this case is then exactly here this purple or yeah purple highlighted area but of course i don't want to do this always manually by hand by measuring something and this should be done automatically in the software and i will show you how to do this so the question is only how um maybe you know about this option which was also available in orphan 5 member loads from area load maybe we can check this out so what we need to do we need to define of course a load magnitude per kilonewton per square meters 
and we can define a plane and we can load members. But of course, I don't have members here because of course the whole load should not be covered by the by the hip rafter. It should be also covered here by the purlins or walls. And yeah, you see it's only possible for members. And um, yeah, of course I could member here, I, I, I could create here a kind of pseudo member to get uh, yeah to get the distribution the correct one yeah but another disadvantage here with this member load from area is it's a kind of or it's actually an isotropic load distribution so we have not the option to say okay the load goes yeah the load should be distributed here in global x direction this is not possible with this one with this option so in this case I have a better option. I use here, create a new surface. And here we have a new surface type called load transfer. And what I will do is I create this surface now. All right, so now you see we have this surface. Um, yeah, maybe I will create directly all others too. Now, where's uh, Gerhard? I want uh, to distribute it in Y direction. Andreas, is there something? Yeah, uh, we lost a little bit. As we lost some seconds. Uh, we couldn't hear you, but now it uh, seems to be okay. Oh. Um, sorry, should I repeat something or just continue? Maybe the last uh, two sentences uh, for secure. Uh, we we okay. didn't hear, hear something. Okay, I'm sorry Maybe for 20 that. seconds also. Yeah, okay, good. So, <clears throat> thanks for the information. Um, okay, so we are, we are looking forward to apply the loads here in Y direction. So that's why we check the access system and here we have the option to define the load transfer direction. In this case, I want to transfer it in Y direction. So just click OK, and now let's apply a load. So in this case, an area load. And that's a typical surface load and nothing special actually. So let's apply a, yeah, a load of 1.5 kilonewton per square meter, which is yeah, really heavy load actually for a roof, but not so uncommon. All right. You see here our area load, nothing special, but of course you can check the load directly on the beam as well by right-clicking the surface, display load transfer separately. Okay, and now you can see how the load is distributed here. You see here it's constant over the element, but you can change this easily. Just go again to load transfer, and switch this to varying. So this will be also the new default setting in the future version. So it should be available, I guess, next week that this is the default value, not uniform, but varying. All right, that's all. Just click OK and you see, OK, perfect. It is exactly as expected, but of course, there is no load here on the pearlins or on the walls. Um, because right now, the hip rafter is covering the whole load from the whole surface which is of course not the truth but how to apply here the load also on these lines so when we check the load transfer surface you see the loaded objects can be members or lines and that's the big advantage compared to the uh, member loads from area load option but you see there is no load but that's clear because there is no stiffness defined on these lines. So either define a member or just define a line support. So let's do this and you will see directly how, what's going on. So when you apply the load, uh, the, the, sorry, when you apply the, the line supports, 
it's directly changing the load distribution as well for the hip rafter. And this is exactly yeah, what we are looking for. And also the distribution on the rafter looks so far, yeah, really nice and as I expect. So we will do the same also on the other surfaces. So I need to define a line support everywhere where we have a stiffness. Okay, and now we can apply the load. It's 1.5 kilonewton. I guess we have it already here. Just add two and three. Yeah, and that's it. So and the big advantage here is you will get directly the loads here on this wall for the first design or for, for example, for the Perlin. Yeah. Of course, you can delete the line hinge here and apply directly another beam and connect it with an hinge, for example, to consider yeah, the Perlin. You can consider also a column underneath. That's also possible. Yeah. Um, but of course, for, for today's presentation, I will just focus on this. On the zipper after. All right, so we have defined, uh, yeah, the loads for load case one, self weight, and we will create another load case. So I will just copy the load case, um, copy load case, and let's apply a snow load. Okay, I will deactivate, of course, the self weight, and I will define snow here. Action categories should be. Snow less than thousand meters. Okay, that's all. So you see directly, depending on the action category, the load duration is set automatically. We will skip wind loads and so on. It would be too time consuming now. And uh, but it's the same. Yeah, it's actually the same. You apply not a, a global load in this case. You apply local loads. That's also possible. All right, then let's go through the load combinatorics. Of course, we have um, we have the design situations for ULS and for SLS. And the, yeah, the result of the design situation, maybe we can select all of them and switch this from second order from P delta to yeah, first order means geometrically linear analysis, which is enough in my example. Okay, so let's check the load combination. Of course, we get all relevant load combinations. Uh, and yeah, the related load duration as well for each load combination. Okay, so far for the load combination, and um, yeah, let's let's focus actually only on this on this uh, hip rafter. So I will create a visibility, and um, I will define some parameters for the design. So we finished with the loading. So now we can focus on the on the design. So here I have three separate members. I could also model this as one members and use intermediate nodes. This is also possible. But in this case, I use three separate members. And to bring this back to one beam, I create a member set. So we name this hip rafter. And we want to overtake the design properties. So I don't want to have the design properties on each single member. I want to see it on the global or on the complete member set. OK, so let's go to the next tab, design types. So here we define some specific stuff for the design. We have effective lengths. Let's see what's, what's to do here. And let's check it. Okay, so we have to ask us if st stability is a, an issue here in this case. So when we think about buckling around the y uh, around the c-axis, so we have a lot of check rafters here, and I can definitely say that buckling around c-axis is is not an issue here. Yeah, at least when we have check rafters every 70, 80 centimeters, so I can deactivate buckling around c-axis. The same for lateral torsion buckling in this case. There will no lateral torsional buckling occur. So it is not controlling in the design, definitely not. For y-axis, okay, when you think about the normal forces are really small, I can imagine uh, buckling around y-axis is also not a big deal, but 
Let's define the parameters for it to show you how does it work. Okay. So in this tab, you see we have this, um, the support types and we have, yeah, one support on start and one on the end. This is the default setting. But of course, we have these intermediate nodes. So I will insert this intermediate node. So we have two intermediate nodes and we have it fixed in C direction. So around Y direction. But of course, here on the cantilever start, I have no support. So, and you can see here, these are my buckling lengths. We have one for the cantilever, we have one for the first span, and another one for the second span, which can be modified, of course. Yeah, for the cantilever, maybe we can set this directly to no buckling, since there will be no compression force in this in this rafter, uh, in this cantilever. Okay, so that's it so far for the effective lengths for the design. So the next step is about design situation configurations. Um, maybe let's have a look inside. Nothing special. Maybe we can neglect some some forces. Uh, maybe of a result of of uh, p delta analysis, we want to ignore. Um, yeah, some some internal forces. This can be set here or some additional setting, which I don't want to uh, explain in detail now. The same for the SLS here. We have our limits defined L over 300 for characteristic and so on. Okay, fire is the same, but we don't spend focus on the fire today. Okay, so the next tab is important for serviceability. So as you can see here, we need a reference length for the serviceability. The reference length should be, of course, per span. As you can see here now, we have only one span. So if we would leave this as it is, it would consider the whole length of the beam as reference length. So in this case, it's 10 meter 38 over 300, for example. This is, of course, not the wish behavior. How we can control this? We can control it by using this design supports. So maybe just hit the F1 button and then the manual is loaded. And uh, yeah, you will see here what is actually the function of a design support. And the first, uh, the first um, function is the definition of the boundary conditions for the design pressure perpendicular to the green direction, which was implemented in LFM6, and the segmentation of the members or set of members for the deflection analysis. Okay, so we need to define design supports to get the segmentation. Um, so in this case, for the member set start, which is here, we don't need a support, but for the second or for the end, we need one. So I create it here. And here you can see we have, you can enter a support length and this factor, this KC90 factor for the design check compression perp perpendicular to the grain. But I must say it was implemented for this typical straight beam solution. Um, when we think about this birth mouse uh, cut in the in the cantilever, so it is not possible right now to consider this uh, this notch. So therefore, we will use the design supports here now only for the serviceability. That's why we set this to direct support, though we have no inputs for that. Okay. So here we go. We will add this design support also on the intermediate nodes. And we check only the deformation in local C direction. And here you can see our segment length. So we have one segment for the cantilever, the next one for this, and the next one for this. And this is these values are used for determining the reference lengths. Um, okay, so that's it so far. Just hit the OK button, and we will also see this design supports here. Um, we can directly deactivate this design support since they are not important anymore for me. Um, types for members, design supports, and maybe member sets is not important for me. All right. Go. Um, that's it, actually. Maybe I forgot one thing because of the loads. Of course, I have copied load case one means we need to change the load for snow load. Let's apply two kilonewton per square meters. And the load direction should be, of course, projected. All right.
So when we check the loads, do not wonder why the load is here displayed also for snow on the yeah on the true length of the beam. This is um, it's kind of specialty in in this uh, in this um, load transfer surfaces. They can only deal with loads and project it um, in the true length of the beam. So when we check it separately again, um, give a minute. Here we go. You see the loads are applied. <clears throat> Sorry, the loads are applied in the projected area. But the internal process converted automatically to the true length. So that's you must imagine uh, it's a kind of umbrella. So when you flip the umbrella, yeah, it gathers all raindrops. It does not matter in which direction. Is it in gravity direction or is it a kind of mix of gravity and lateral direction? So uh, the loads are always displayed in in um, <clears throat> in the true length direction. Okay, but it's converted correctly, of course. Um, okay, so let's focus on the design. So we have defined all parameters for the design. We will check this one. So we want to check ULS and SLS. I want to design not the members because I have no inputs for the members. So I have to activate this option because I want to design the members via the parent member set. Okay, I will deactivate this, and that's actually all for now. We can directly run the analysis. <clears throat> I'm sorry for that. It takes sometimes a bit. Is there are some delays because of this go to training or go to webinar tool? That's why it sometimes takes longer. Um, okay, so let's check the result. So when we check the result here, we have a ratio of over 100% here at this cantilever and also here in this span uh, because of serviceability. Yeah, it's directly listed here in this overview. So let's think about here about this uh, 140, 54%. Of course, it's because of the cantilever goes upwards here because the span here is so long and of course because of the short cantilever you get a really high deformation here but in reality yeah you will not check this this deformation here on this on this cantilever so that's why you have the option here member sets to deactivate it so when you deactivate this option here then no design check is done for the cantilever and this is the option what I want to choose here and also here, because of um, the first span, the deformation was a bit too high. So maybe I will, I will change this 220 millimeter. Okay. So let, let's run the analysis again. Of course, we have changed the cross section. We need to rerun the analysis also for load cases and, or in this case, load combinations and of course the timber design. All right, perfect. So that's our design. Um, I mean, I don't spend time now to present you the internal forces and so on. I guess that's clear to everyone. Um, let's have a small look at the design directly, design by member set. And here you can see all designs. You see there are a few zero values from neglect neglectable uh, internal forces or deformation, but you can define here a small filter, show only something which is bigger than 1%, for example. And then you see all design ratios which are done. So we have tension inside the beam. We have, of course, shear, bending. Um, we have bending and uh, yeah, bending and tension, bending and compression. We have stability check. So maybe let's check uh, our buckling factor in this case. So yeah, you see the reduction here is not really much. It's from 100% to uh, 86 percent sorry here but when you compare the compressive strengths uh, the, the, the compression um, stress compared to the bending stress so it's so small nearly you can neglect it 
So it's 10, 20, 40 times smaller than the bending uh, stress. Okay, and of course, serviceability. You can check it here separately or you can overlap both ratios. Yeah, that's possible also. Okay, um, and maybe let's check one design check again. As you can see, we have here our equations. So you can print this also to uh, to the print route report afterwards. You can follow each step. You can control every, or you can compare every value with your hand calculation. And this gives you a big uh, insight in the program. So it's not a kind of black box. Okay, so you can also check here the ratio over the cross section, or you can check the stresses. So for example, normal, Um, that means the normal force is also really small. Yeah. Okay. So that's it for the design. I mean, it's nothing special. If you want, if you are interested in more details about the design, I recommend you to watch our first webinar. There we spend more uh, time for the results. Okay. So that's it so far for the design. Um, let's, uh, yeah, let's create a printout report. But before we create the printout report, we want to define um a few views to yeah to create pictures more easy or yeah and therefore we first we create a new coordinate system because right now i'm not able to see the full length properly because it's not in xc or in yc plane yeah so that's why we create here a new coordinate system so first point is here so the u axis is defined by this point and the plane is defined here we change the coordinates is and this one should be in zero coordinate okay and we'll see we have this user defined coordinate system and now i'm able to check the view directly in w direction yeah and that helps me to get the full length all right um yeah let's create a few views um so one view should be the geometry loads internal forces design for example this helps me afterwards to create uh, to yeah to create pictures easily for the printout report so for the geometry of course i need yeah i need a dimensioning so in sorry in the current coordinate system so for this rafter here second plane and the offset should be 0 0.5 for projection in u direction in the first plane and we define 0 0.5 meters and the same for the projection in v direction by 0 0.5 meter so that's it we need to define a slope dimensioning okay so and that's it that's actually all about the geometry we can remove the global axis systems so and watch only the u and we the first view should be the All right, good. Let's switch off the numbering of the members and the nodes. Another view. So the second view should be 0 0.2. It's loading. And the next one should be internal forces. All right. So we check directly here the envelope. So the third view is internal forces. And the last few should be the design ratio for the timber design. All 
Okay, so and now let's check the advantage here of this fuse. So for example, when you cancel the view and you set this setting here, maybe apply the load here, and you want to go back again to this um, to this uh, to this view, you can just hit this button here and you get directly the same view while you create this view. This helps me afterwards to create yeah the pictures and so on. Okay, so let's start with the print out report. Okay, let's create a new one. And yeah, that's the biggest question which comes always what to what setting should I choose here? Of course, without to see anything, I don't know either. So I just hit the save and show button and let's check out what the default setting gives us. Okay, so the big advantage in R from 6 is you can have the printout report next to the FM. So you can work with both windows at the same time. Uh, so maybe, yeah, let's start with, uh, let's start to, to remove something or to just to add something. Here you see a model overview. If you don't like it, just right click it, edit it. You will come back to, oh, to this window here and you can rotate it. You can define here the window settings. So maybe this should be this size here. And maybe I don't want to see any dimensioning and just hit OK button and it will be updated automatically in the print route report. Okay, so, but yeah, let's come to the next page. It's about the content. You can activate it or you can leave it or not. So it depends on you. But let's start here with the settings here. That's why I check both windows at the same time. And then let's edit the setting because this window depends on R frame six on the table. Okay, so model location, for example, in the base data, you, you are able to enter the location of the construction. In this example, I want to switch it off. Materials, okay, materials is interesting. Um, maybe you can activate the properties or not. I mean, everyone who designs a GL24 should know about the characteristics, but of course you can display the properties, but strengths and so on. Sections, of course, <clears throat> I want to see this in the printout report. When we talk about lines, so you see here which line or which nodes are connected with which line, for example. To be honest, I'm not interested in this. The same for members. Yeah, which line is related to the member? I'm not interested in, I will deactivate it. The same for the surfaces. In this case, the surfaces are only, yeah, for the load transfer, I will deactivate this. The same for the special objects here. It shows me, okay, when you analyze according to second order analysis, um, you need to consider the mean value of the stiffness, but I have a linear analysis, I will not show this information. Nodal supports are important, of course, in my example, I activate here this option, rotated via three angles to get also the, the angle of the, or the rotation of the supports, line supports, I don't need this. Type for members, design supports, I'm not interested in this information. Surface supports, I don't have any surface support, so I can leave it or not, but it does not matter. Okay, effective lengths. Of course, I want to see what setting and which effective lengths are defined here. That's why I can leave it. Um, okay, so for load cases, yeah. Here, let's go down. You see here, load case and a few information. Okay, self width is considered or not. You can leave this as it is, or you can use this reduced description. This reduce me everything only to one line, which gives me self weight and if the self-weight is considered and which load duration it has. So let's come to the design situation. So for the design situation, I want to see the same in a reduced description. And of course, I want to see load combinations as well. But, so let me check this, Where are the load combinations. Ah, they were switched off, okay. That's why I cannot see it, but I want to see the load combinations as well as well with a reduced description. Okay, static analysis settings, which solver was used and so on, how many iterations and so on and so on. And to be honest, in my opinion, for my 
case or for my example, it's not important. I will deactivate it. The same for the combination wizard. Okay, loads is of course a topic, but I don't want to see any tables. I will do this by pictures because a picture, of course, mostly says more than some tables. I don't need any guide objects and uh, I don't need any parts list. Um, here we see the summary. So for each load combination, we see the summary, the sum of load, the maximum deformation, and so on. For me, it's not important. I will deactivate it. I'm interested in the node supports, for example. But in this case, I will define it only for a specific loading. So in this case, it should be for self-weight, snow, and the ULS combinations. That's it. And <clears throat> here I want to define some uh, settings because I don't want to see all of these values. So when we go to uh, notes, in, yeah, you see the table is really long with a lot of information. I'm just interested in, sorry, I'm just interested in the values, but not in the extreme values here. Okay, so far that's it. Then let's go to the internal forces by section. In this case, I want to see the member internal forces by member sets. Again, for the loading, but of course not for all loading, only for the design situation one. All right, and I will uh, define also here some settings. I don't want to see these values and this and this and this because this is the envelope. I want to see only the extreme ones. Yeah, this helps me to reduce the table much. All right. Um, okay, that's it so far for Airframe side. Now let's go to the add-on side. Um, so when we check the add-on, yeah, we will see a few settings here. Maybe we can skip one of those, but for the same for the materials because the materials we have already here in the basic objects. But let's leave it. Um, ultimate config, we can deactivate, in my opinion, it's not necessary to show, but serviceability config, maybe it's important to see which limits were used. Okay, we leave this, but fire, we don't have fire, so I will deactivate this directly. Okay, and I'm interested in the design ratio per member set. Okay, and here I will activate as well this design check ratio. I define 1%, then I get only designs which are higher than 1%. And I'm interested not in all this information about which member, which location, which stress point, and so on. So that's why I deactivate all this directly. Loading, maybe, yes. Yeah, and that's it. Design overview, we can deactivate as well. All right, let's hit the save and show button and let's see. Before we had around, I guess, 20, 25 pages or something. Now it comes down to six pages. And when you see here, yeah, tables were really small and only the yeah, important values are listed here. And yeah, this is actually the aim, yeah, to have only a few pages for this rafter and not 20, 30, 40, 50 or more pages. Of course, uh, nobody reads this. Of course, you can reduce pages here as well. So for example, this page or the content can be removed and you are four, have four pages and maybe you will find a way to reduce it to three pages. Yeah, But of course we need pictures. And now um, let's create these pictures. And that's why I created the views. So I hit this button here, geometry, and now I will print it to the printout report. So here we go, we have this live preview, so you can activate or deactivate it. So when you deactivate it, the input is a bit quicker. So here I use a name geometry, and it should be window filling, and the height should be only 33% of the page. So when you hit the button again, you will get a preview. All right, that's it. I just hit the OK button. And I go to loading and print this picture as well into, into the printout report. So this is uh, loads, load case one.
can do the same for load case two. All right. Okay, then we talk about internal forces. In this case, I, yeah, I draw a multi, uh, um, yeah, I, I, I draw or I print more pictures in one, in one, in one picture actually. Um, it's a picture in picture, a graphic. So and therefore I create a few new windows, in this case two. And then let's check it horizontally. So the first one should be the normal force. The second should be the shear force, and the third one should be the bending moment. All right, let's print this picture. And I select here the option more, but of course not with 33%, but with, let's say, 70%. Here we go. And one more picture. About the design ratio. Right. So let's switch this back to 33%. That's enough. All right. Okay, then let's go back to the printout report. Now you see eight pages. We see the pictures. Oh, sorry, I forgot to rename the pictures here. This should be called internal forces and this should be design ratio, but yeah, for now, it's okay. So you see here, we have eight pages and we have yeah, actually a nice clear printout report created with all, in my opinion, all necessary information. Um, yeah, so that's it so far for the printout report. Of course, here in this printout report manager, you can create templates, you can save it and you can use it in another file or you can just open this file again, change the parameters or change yeah, the length of the beams and so on. And that brings me to the next topic. It's about this point number or topic number five, parameterization and scripting. Of course, if you have this part really often, so if you have really often um, checks for, for hip rafters or for different kind of, of beams, uh, of course, I don't want to model everything the same way what I did in the last uh, yeah, 50 minutes. So that's why you can use different options. So I prepared everything already here. I have no time to do this in, yeah, in real time. So here we have this structure. It is the same structure, but only with two per, uh, hip rafters modeled and also the rafters here I have modeled. Um, and this, model works with parameters. So when we check it here, I have parameters defined. And each parameter is connected to a, the node coordinate. Yeah. So you see here this yellow corner. And when you check the formula, you see, okay, we use these parameters, cantilever plus Perlin, to get this coordinate of 4.3 meters. So when we check it here, it's cantilever plus uh, what was it? I can't remember. Plus, plus Perlin is exactly 3.5 plus 0 0.8. And the big, big advantage now is I can change the parameters easily. Yeah. So maybe let's check this printout report first to see um, the difference between before I change parameters and afterwards. All right, so maybe let's check the geometry. So this is this picture here. It's about the hip rafter and the rafters, the dimensioning and so on. So maybe I can bring this next to this. Here we go. Let's remove this one here and this one. Of course, it's a big advantage if you have a second monitor because with one monitor, of course, it's really, <laughs> it's really, uh, yeah, it's too small. Okay, so let's open the parameters again. So when you finished with all these parameters, you're you're able to to change this. Um, so I may create an extreme, yeah, an extreme example. Let's say eight meters, and the slope should be 45 degree. The purling should be located on 2.5 meter, and the cantilever is, for example, two meters. 
also for yeah for dimensions and for the spacing which is related to this load on the raft okay and when i hit the okay button you see the geometry will be changed automatically sorry this was not my aim this switched automatically the next uh, example so yeah here we go you see the inclination was changed to 45 degree and the length was changed to eight meters yeah and now we can simply update our print report hit this update button and we get automatically all information into this uh into this uh, printout report without uh yeah creating a new printout report without modeling something it's just about checking the dimension of the hip rafter if the design ratio is still okay if not okay optimize the cross section and then you can reprint everything again all right um, maybe let's close the printout report and let's come to the next topic it's about um, the parametrization as well but it's about uh, scripting um, so unfortunately i cannot spend so much time now on scripting but we did a webinar a few weeks ago um, about scripting you can find it also here in this uh, in this webinar page on our website um, but what is the big advantage here for the scripting tool um, i have prepared a script so let's let's delete all of this and run the script so it's exactly the same what I've prepared in the last 50 minutes, but here I can easily define the parameters. For example, again, 8, 45, number of Perlins. So I have the option here yeah, to program uh, with JavaScript uh, how many Perlins I want to use. For example, only one on the bottom side. And yeah, when you hit the run button, the script runs and you will get uh, yeah, the geometry with only one Perlin. Yeah? If you run the script again, for example, with two Perlins, you will get an intermediate support here. So this all is possible. Of course, it yeah, it needs a bit more experience with programming and so on. But if you are interested in, please follow the webinar what we did, I guess, last or two weeks ago about scripting. Okay, so that's it for this example. Of course, you can save blocks. So we have here this block manager. I guess I'm not sure. I guess it's always uh, or it's also shown in this in the scripting webinar. But um, you can save stru structures as block and load the blocks as well. That's also possible. But I will skip this part for now. You see here there are already a few blocks defined, but um, yeah, not for for now. Um, <clears throat> okay, then <clears throat> um, let's go back to the hip rafter again. As you remember, we have, or maybe I will, I've used my previous example, this one. So, as you know, we have to find here a rectangular section for this cross section. Let's check this out. Okay. Of course, we has we have some cuts here on the top side for this hip rafter. We have some bird's mouse uh, cuts here on the bottom side and of course we need to consider this in the design yeah of course you can calculate on the safe side with a natural section um, but that's why we have implemented also these typical timber cross sections so in this case you can directly start with this um, with this uh, yeah typical hip rafter section um, also for the valley rafter should be available here and also when it's cut it on both sides that's also possible but when we think about connections so when we think about how to connect the beams uh, to the to the hip rafter i mean where i live it's really typical to use this uh, dovetail connectors for example because it's you don't need additional fastener of course you will apply a fully threaded screws that's clear for uplifting forces but um yeah, that's an easier way, but of course you will create an additional notch here. So another cross-section reduction, which needs to be considered. So the question now is only if we need to consider also this reduction 
for the stiffness. So for the design side, of course, we need to consider the reduction. Yeah, when you imagine uh, you have uh, this bird's mouth, uh, bird's mouth uh, cut here, and also a check rafter is connected on the same location. Yeah, then that's an extreme, yeah, example. And in this case, of course, we need to consider the net across section. And so maybe let's create one example here quickly. We should have the time for it. Um, here we will change this to 200, maybe 280, and the width was 120, and this one should be 35 millimeter. Of course, you need to calculate the correct angle and then the correct height um, of this reduction. Okay, so let's change this. Here we go. So, and now the question comes up, what about the stiffness? Is the stiffness correct by considering without the notches? Yeah, I have prepared another example here. It's a solid structure. which shows the influence of this, of this uh, dovetails. So let's switch off the results and see what we have here. Okay, so the first beam here, let me check the X direction, is a notch along the whole length of the beam. Yeah. So the second one is a solid one, a rectangle without any notch. And here on the th third one, we have notches in between, but this notch is filled with a material with E90. Yeah. So when we check it, so these materials are here, are defined with a E modulus 90 degree to the Green direction. And the same here, but without any parts inside the holes or inside the notches. Okay, so and when we check the deformation to check the stiffness for this example, you can see the first one was the notch along the whole length. It's around 36 millimeter. Here we have 11.6, and here you can see that. The reduction with the filled section is nearly the same. Yeah, it's closer, of course, to the to the proto cross section instead of the netto section. Yeah, so and that's why we can consider in this case um, the proto cross section for the stiffness, but of course for the design we need to use the netto cross section. And this is um, this is um, the next topic. What I want to show you how to do this. Um, okay, so the stiffness here is correct let's say and let's go to the sections tab for the design and here you have the option for this hip rafter to use a different section so in, th in this case you can switch this and yeah define the new cross section with a reduced section so for example when we think about this dovetail connectors here um, you can use for example this one yeah and here you can just enter everything 280 this was 120, uh, I don't know, let's say 40, just for example. Um, this should be 120 minus two times 25 millimeters. It's 70 millimeters, and this should be 16, maybe, I don't know. Okay, so you see, now you have this cross-section, and this is the cross-section which is used for the design, for the ULS checks only. Of course, when you think about this on the bottom, maybe better to neglect this part completely, it will not help so much. Yeah, so this is one way how to consider these reductions in this hip rafter, or in, in general, how to consider reductions in, in, in beam elements. Um, for straight or for, for uniform rectangular sections, there's also the possibility here to define some, um, some um, where is it? Member sets, here we go, to define some uh, local section reductions, but they are based only on rectangular sections and you can define only a notch along the whole height or width, so that's typical for these uh, notched beams here. Um, that's also possible. Okay, um, my last example for today before we finish is another one. And the load transfer surface is to show you what is possible. <clears throat> of 
Okay, so let's think about this roof here. We have purlins and we have hip rafter here, another purlin here on this side. And the question is yeah, always how to get the loads on it easily. Is it is it uh, on the safe side to design the purlin with a whole load from the from this rafter, for example, or maybe when this building here is uh, yeah is taller than of course maybe this is design giving because this gives you a nodal load here or it gives you an, yeah, a nodal load here in the in the pearl in, in the center so that's always hard uh, to get a good approximation yeah maybe two load is too uneconomic especially for the next parts maybe there's a column underneath and maybe an, another beam underneath the column and so on so maybe the load is then too much and it would be good to have yeah the real let's say the real distribution um okay so let's check the loads here we have created one, or i have created one load case and here you can see there is a free load um on uh, as well on this surface on this part and yeah let's check the distribution on the beams so we can check this and maybe better to check only the members Okay, and now you can see directly the distribution, which looks really good. So we see the reduction here for, yeah, for the pearl in here on the apex. Here the reduction because of the hip rafter here, and here we see, yeah, because of this additional free load, we get more loads on it, and that big advantage here. You can see, yeah, I have this semi-rigid support considered here for this hip rafter because the pearl in is not supported here, but here. And this is a kind of, let's say, 2.5D solution. Uh, and yeah, this helps you maybe to determine the loads. Yeah. And especially when you think about parametrization, you will get the loads quickly or you can, you will get the designs quickly for this kind of, of structures. This should give you only an idea what is possible with this load transfer surface. Yeah. And this uh, maybe helps you in your, in your daily job. Okay, so I guess I considered everything and yeah, that's actually the end of my presentation. If you have any further question afterwards, of course, feel free to send us an email and we will answer all your questions. Okay, then let's go back to Andrea then. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, Gerhard, thank you for a nice presentation. Yeah, we are uh, in time or no, a little bit uh, over the time, but it's quite okay. Um, let me show the website again that I can see you where I can find the recording. Just a moment. Gerhard already showed the page, the webinar page under lubal.com and news and events. You can find our webinars. And then you have to scroll a little bit down. Okay, that's the next webinars. And oh, where where is today's webinar? Sorry. Ah, here's it. Okay. Then you have to click on it, and in the next days you will find the recording here, presentation slides, and the models. Here. Yeah. Okay, if you don't have got the new software generation of M6 and R Start 9, you can try it with our free trial version here above. You can click on it and then download the free trial versions of RFM6 and R Start 9. Yeah, with all add-ons, also the timber design add-on. And yeah, you can Try it for 90 days. Okay, that should be all also from my side. I thank Gerhard for this nice presentation. I thank you yeah, for attending. Yeah, have a rest or a nice rest of the day. Maybe we can see each other in another webinar. Bye bye. <laughs>